What's the most valuable present you've ever received? Can you think through it, all your birthdays and your anniversaries and the special rewards that you got for achieving different things? What would you say was the most valuable present that you've ever received? And I don't know. We'd all have different answers. You might say, oh, the bicycle that I got when I was 19 or the motorbike that I bought when I was 22 or the first new car that I got or really a present has meant more to me than even what I have bought myself. Uh, the gift of books that I got when I was eight years of age or the silver watch that I was given when I was 21 or the gold earrings with diamonds that I got when I was 25, we probably have all different answers to that question. But what is the most valuable thing that you've ever been given? What would you say it is? And you know when we put the question like this, we answer, well, life. Life is the most valuable thing I've been given. Without it, I couldn't see the earrings. I couldn't ride the bike. I couldn't smell the flowers. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have consciousness. I wouldn't even be able to think and answer this question if I didn't have life. That's the most valuable thing I've been given, and that's the most valuable thing that I'll ever lose. And if I asked you, well... Are there other things connected with life that you regard as valuable? And you begin to think of the things that you couldn't replace, however much insurance money you got. And of course, you begin to answer, well, yes, I mean, the eyes that I have, the ability to see colors and shapes and forms, the sense of touch that I have, that I cannot even, I cannot only feel the Venus de Milo, but I can feel the grass and I can feel the smoothness of water, touch and, and smell, the ability to smell the, the daffodils and smell the roses, the ability to smell a spring morning in April, those things are the most precious things that I've ever been given. And the ability to think, to connect up a sense of smell with a, a sense of shape and a sense of color, the ability to think and reason, those are the most valuable things I've ever been given. But I don't think of those as things that I've been given. I mean... I've just been born with them. And if I said to you, well, I mean, where did they come from? You know that you have to draw the same conclusion that we've been drawing over these months as we've been talking about the meaning of life, that these things did not just happen. If you went into Tiffany's in New York and you bought a pair of silver earrings for your wife and you said to the clerk or you said to the assistant behind the counter, where did these come from? And he said, I don't know where they came from. I have no idea. They just happened. Uh, they just happened. You'd say to him, well, good. I don't need to pay for them then if they just happened. No, you'd look across him and say, you are dumb. Of course these came from somewhere. They didn't just happen. Look, you can see how intricately they're made and how carefully they've been designed. You can see the silver, the way it's been formed and shaped. You can see the way these things have been put together. Only hands, human hands, could put these together. Only a human brain could think of this. There's an intelligent being of some kind behind this. And, of course, that's what we've said about in incredible cameras like the eyes that focus far more efficiently than even the latest electronic device we have implanted in our most recent cameras. Uh, we're bound to conclude these things have not just happened. These have been given to us. And, of course, that's what we've been talking about over these months, you remember. We've been saying it's obvious that these things have been given to us. Somebody has given us these gifts, these presents that are among the most precious, indeed are the most precious, that we have ever received in our lives. And so we've been saying that the presents that we've been given are evidence that there is an intelligent mind behind the universe. 
And you remember how we have followed that down through the evidence in history, especially in the first century, of there being a remarkable person called Jesus of Nazareth, who really obviously knew more than this present world. He had seemingly been beyond this world into outer space and returned to tell us what kind of being was out there and that that being was his father and had created all this and had given us all this. And of course, what we've been sharing over recent weeks is that the reason these presents were given to us is because the person that gave us them thinks about us and cares about us. Indeed, what this man Jesus said about the Creator is that he has numbered even the hairs of your head. So uh, the being that made you and that designed your eyes and that designed your arm and your leg, that being has counted even the hairs of your head. That's how much he thinks of you. He thinks so much of you that he has done what nobody else in all creation, even your mom, has not done. He has counted the very hairs of your head because he cares about you and he loves you. And that's why he's given you presents. And actually, you know that. The reason you give a person presents is either to get something out of them or really, usually, it's because you love them and you care for them and you express your concern to them and your appreciation and your value of them by the presence you give to them. So it's the same. The being behind the universe has not given you your eyes just because he likes to see eyes working or just because he likes to see a nose smelling or because he has some impersonal, insane delight in seeing an arm lift a suitcase. He has given you those abilities and those powers because he wants you to enjoy the things that he enjoys. And he wants you to be his friend and to know him and to understand the universe the way he understands it and to begin to enjoy what he has made with him. That's why the creator of the universe made you. And that's why he has given you these gifts. And his desire has been that you and I would live our lives in friendship with him. That is, that we'd start each day, you remember the way we illustrated it, as if it was Adam, we'd start each day listening to him and knowing his mind and understanding how he was looking at our world, how he regarded our office, how he regarded the factory that we worked in, how he looked upon the home where we spent our whole day, that we would begin to see things the way he sees them. And we would have such an intuitive oneness with him that not only like Einstein would we begin to think his thoughts after him, but we would know what he wanted us to do day by day and moment by moment. And that is his will. That's why he gave us these presents. His plan was that we should walk through the world with him beside us as our friend, that we would know him intuitively in our thought life, and that he would feed his ideas down to us, not as if we were robots. That's why he made us with free wills. He doesn't want robots. But he made us with free wills so that we could be his willing friends. And that's the purpose of giving us all these gifts. Now, what have we done with those? Well, you know uh, yourself what you've done. You, I know what I've done. Uh, we don't even need to go back to the early chapters of Genesis in the Bible to find out what we've done. We know what we've done. We decided, forget it. We don't need to depend on some invisible creator who may not even be there. We don't need to depend on somebody else telling us what he thinks. Ever from we were kids or children and rebelled against our parents, we know we want to be our own men. We want to be our own women. We want to use this world as if it were our particular oyster shell, and we want to choose the oyster that we need from it. And so we've decided to go our own way. And because we've gone our own way, of course, we've started to miss the great sense of love that our Creator made us to experience. And He did. He made us for love. That's it. It's not just a ploy by a psychologist or psychiatrist. It's not just the old story that, oh, you don't want to be dependent or to want, need a father figure. The fact is, reality is reality. We are not 
independent creatures. You're very dependent. You've been carried into this world. You'll be carried out. You'll be looked after while you're in it, and things will happen during this life that you cannot explain, and incredible things take place that enable you to go on living that you cannot understand. So we're very dependent, and we're obviously dependent if you think of the people in Australia who are utterly dependent on the power of gravity that holds them on the earth. So in so many ways, we're absolutely dependent on this creator, and he has made us for his love. Let's talk a little more about that tomorrow.